Scene. Our special Halloween episode. I am your host, Joe Halloween. Oh, yes. I <laughs> love what you did there. Very nice. And once again, I'm joined by Imaginos Pete. Hey, hey. And Andrew Psycho Walker. <laughs> there we go. That's a Still good. need to watch that movie. <laughs> You've never seen Psycho. Bits and Holy pieces of it. Holy moly. Is, add, is, add the re- to the list. is the yes. re- remake with Vince Vaughn worth watching? Don't, no, don't, don't. I heard, I heard it was that's bad. Blasphemy. Okay, man, I'm asking. about ready to come over this table. <laughs> that's just you know you're dead to me. <laughs> Appropriate for Halloween. Uh, today's topic is uh, we're going to talk about some of our favorite horror movies, uh, specifically some movies that were based on real life incidents. But we're just going to open it up. Uh, some movies that you like watching this time of the year. Uh, you know, the older I get, the more I just embrace this time of the year. I really love Halloween, uh, fall, the crisp air. Yep. And uh, come October 1st, I pull out a stack of DVDs and start watching spooky movies. Uh, so far this Halloween season, I've pulled out a couple that I, I haven't seen in a long, long time. Uh, I've watched The Lost Boys, which is the 1980s vampire movie, yeah. which... Isn't a great movie, doesn't have a great story, but it's so damn 80s that it's fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Just for that 80s nostalgic uh, quality that it has. I'll have to add it to my list. <laughs> Get a pen out. Every time I think there's a, <laughs> every time I think there's a floor to this disappointment. No. no. <laughs> um, I also watched uh, the original The Fly uh, with Vincent Price, yes. who is not the titular fly. He's a secondary character in the film. Um, and honestly, I don't remember the last time I saw it, if ever. Like, I might have go, to go back to Sir Graves' ghastly days uh, if I ever did see the fly. So I was kind of watching it with fresh eyes uh, just recently. And you know what? When you see pictures from the original fly, it looks very cheesy and corny, but it actually holds up. Yep. There's character development that um, makes you care for these characters so that when they undergo this this transformation, it's actually pretty shocking and horrific. And I can only imagine what an audience in, in the late 40s or early 50s when this movie came out. It's in color, which shocked me. For some reason, a lot of people remember the fly being black and white. Um, but I could only imagine the audience at that time just being horrified sure. at the concept of this man being merged with a fly and stuff. And so I found it very entertaining. And so then... I had to follow up the original with the 1986 remake, star, uh, remake starring Jeff Goldblum. And I haven't seen it in a, a long time, but I forgot how gruesome and horrific it is. That was it, that gore, 80s gore. Yeah, like they, each yep. movie that came out in the 80s in the horror genre seemed to try to outdo the prede- predecessor. And they just got gorier and gorier with the effects practical effects yeah. in the room effects no cgi stuff um especially being directed by david cronenberg who yeah. is known for his body horror oh, like geez. almost every one of his movies there's yeah grotesque body horror yeah which i have seen bits and pieces of that when i was a kid of, mm-hmm. of the gold blue bunk and that <laughs> it did legit did you see the ankle scary. dissolving part nope but uh, uh, oh man if it's streaming, I need to turn it on. You know, that's it's one of those movies. I remember seeing it in the theater, and I mm-hmm. remember distinctly the crowd reacting. You know, it's I almost kind of envision what the memories the Titanic survivors must have had, you know, listening to the people that were in the water. That's kind of how, like, seeing the fly was in the theater. Like, people screamed. Like, people were so grossed out. Uh, as a matter of fact, people don't seem to remember – that there's a line in the movie that paid tribute to the original movie where Jeff Goldblum says, uh, help me, please help me, which is the big climax <laughs> of the original. And people say, oh, did he say that in this movie? The reason people don't remember is 
just a few seconds before that, his ear comes off. Yeah. Spoiler alert. And I remember the crowd just going, oh, ah, and they were screaming as he said that line. So uh, later on on video, you go, oh, there it is there. But it is gruesome and it's horrific, but it is one of my favorite horror movies. It's going to be a while before I watch it again, though. Sure, sure. So those are a few that I've watched this Halloween season. Uh, I got a stack of them that I'll be going through over the next week or so. See, uh, you're, you're you're better about this, Joe. For me, I don't wait till October first. For me, as soon as Labor Day starts, it's Halloween time. <laughs> it's that long runway for Halloween, thanks Christmas. Wow. The, the day after my birthday in July. Hey, that's when the horror starts. <laughs> <laughs> my God. <laughs> Now, I, I, for me, I, I try to start the, the Halloween stuff with October 1st, even though it, it does creep in earlier and earlier. Like Orion has a zombie walk in mid-September, so that sort of kind of gets you prepped for the season. But, um, but yeah, this is, this is the time of the year I really like watching horror movies. Do you guys have any go-to horror movies that you recommend to people when Halloween rolls around? Yeah. Uh, for me, instantly, I think of Salem's Lot. Love that movie. I could watch that at any time. That was a TV movie, right? Yeah. Well, no, it was an original movie back in the... Uh, I thought it was a TV movie originally. Was that and it was based on Stephen, Stephen King? King? Right, right. Okay. Stephen King, yeah. 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 yeah and, um, well, I wasn't there when it came on. <laughs> if it had a theater release, I only had to see it uh, um, yeah. on TV. It has that iconic scene with the kid outside the yep. bedroom window. A lot of... Like, for for horror, I, I love that one. I I, I love Jaws. You Jaws. can say what you want. I mean, people are like, well, what's so scary about that? I don't know. You go go take a swim. Find out. There were people who saw that movie in 75 or whenever it was came out, and they still are afraid to go into the ocean because of that movie. It had, you know, it's it, it did to the ocean what Psycho did to showers. <laughs> like, people were afraid to, to go in the water. It had that sort of an impact. And that's another a visceral memory that I have in a movie theater of seeing Jaws for the first time when I was probably about 10 or 11 years yeah. old. And again, <laughs> I remember the audience reactions and popcorn and flying in the I air. I wish and, I could have been there for that. That's one of those ones. Uh, you know, people say you wish you were there for when, when Star Wars came out in 77 Yeah, and then Jaws in 75. Yeah. Mm. And that, sure. The I'm glad the director's cut never came out that he wanted to put on there. It would have made it infinitely more sc scarier. But my Mount Rushmore... Sam's Lot, Jaws, I'd have to put, um, oh, my God, I had it on the tip of my tongue. It, 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 it just <laughs> Hocus pocus. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> no, uh, but, yeah, it was uh, Jaws, it was Salem's Lot, and then um, The Exorcist and, oh. the, and The Omen. Oh, yeah. Now, The Exorcist, and that, that might uh, be a segue into uh, the real-life inspirations for some of these movies, but... To this day, I, I consider The Exorcist the scariest movie ever made yeah. and because of its religious connotations and, and stuff like that. But I've only seen it maybe two or three times. I remember one time going to a viewing party with a group of people and watching this special edition that included the spider walking scene where yeah. she bends over backwards and goes down the stairs. And uh, I don't have any desire to ever see that movie again. It, to me, it's that scary. It's terrifying. Yeah. So when people ask me, what's the scariest movie ever made? Exorcist, hands down. Even the trailers for this new one, there's like this new Exorcist movie that either had just come out or yeah. will be coming out. And yeah. the trailers freak me out. I'm like yeah. watching Monday Night Football, and they show a trailer, and I'm like, come on, yeah. man. They showed a, a couple of little kids <laughs> with, with their eyes all, yeah. yeah. My, my thing is, I, I, I hear you about the thing. I was just, that movie was, I, I, I was I was upset with that. I was like, that's this feels lazy. Let's double it up. Let's make two girls going. There's a twist. There's a cool twist in that movie, so at least they mm. did that part. Yeah, for the for the new one. Yeah, for the new you one. You saw it? No, or? no. This is a, my 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 brother saw it because my brother is like the canary in the coal mine when it comes to horror. Because okay. <laughs> okay. he got me into horror. He's my older brother, so yeah, yeah. yeah. He goes, uh, boy, I saw it. It's uh, uh, there's like one little twist in the end, but it's not. It's not what you it, you know. What you there's the it'll always be the Exorcist, and then th it's one of those things where the sequel. It's not worth. Well, because your time. Well, yeah, I mean, you look. If it comes out in streaming, I'm going to see it when it comes out in streaming. Because, mm. but I'm not going to go to a theater to go see it. So no. I, that's the new standard now. Like, will I 
get me out of my chair to go and to the theater and get that experience. Sixteen dollars to yeah. go see. <laughs> because there is something like like Joe was saying, you want to be in that that shared experience in the theater when yeah. everyone is freaked out and you're like, oh my god. And we're kind of losing that because yeah. you know it's very rare that I go to a theater anymore and it's filled to capacity. It's you know I, I went to go see the Barbie movie and and there probably was twenty or thirty people in the audience and you that was saw- considered a big hit. You saw that instead of Oppenheimer? <laughs> yes, Joe! I did. Oh. <laughs> what can I say? Andrew, what's your what's your go-to? What's your top 3 for horror this time of the year? For for family friendly um and this can go with two different seasons, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. Um, well, fair enough. That's a good song. My, my sister Alexa and I would yeah. watch that movie all the time. Wow. We grew up on Tim Burton movies. Um I love I I always have loved and had a special place in my heart for stop motion animation. Yeah, sure. I love it. I love the characters. I love Jack and uh, what's the his girlfriend's name? Uh, Sally. Sally, no. and the evil genius uh, yeah. or the the the, doc, the, the professor the yeah. professor who reminds me of Nick because every time Nick has been on my podcast in the past, he always plays a that's e- true evil genius professor. I'm, so, glad, I'm glad we yeah. got I'm glad we got some context because when you just it reminds me of Nick, I'm like that. Yeah. Okay. that I mean, <laughs> I, I will take it as a compliment, but the audience will be like, really? But no, that's 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 some um, that, that movie came out cl- probably close to 30 years ago, right? Probably 93 or 94. Oh, no, 93. It, yeah. yeah. Yep. 30. It's been it, 30 years. It, so. it stands the test of time. It's and it's that dual holiday movie. You can yeah, start, yeah. you can watch that from October to New Year's Eve. Now, you know what's it, interesting about that film, and this almost feels like the Mandela effect to me, <laughs> where you remember something and then you go, wait, no, that wasn't the case. Uh, even though it's uh, the movie's a, a Tim Burton movie, he did not direct it. No. And that selling. shocked me. Yep. Like, I just discovered then, what do you mean he didn't direct it? It's it's classic Tim Burton, but you're right. Yeah, Henry Selleck. Who also did Coraline. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which was also pretty good, but of course yeah. it doesn't hold yeah. any. It's not Nightmare. Yeah. Um. So uh, other films... Um, I I'm I'm a big horror fan, and I kind of vacillate between you know what are some of my top horror films that I will suggest to people, and of course a lot of it has to do with how recently I watched it. But um, to go back to the '70s, and I haven't watched this movie in several years, but the original Dawn of the Dead, okay, from I believe yeah. it was '78, which was George Romero's second uh, zombie movie, right? Roughly ten years after uh, Night of the Living Dead, which is yeah. Also up there with one of my favorite horror films. Yeah. Um, the idea that he plays with uh, real life humans being trapped in a mall, being invaded by zombies, and how they have to sort of make a fortification out of it, while also playing into consumerism at the time, right? Right. Like, it takes place in a mall, and pe- you know, people are like, oh, we need this, we need this. There are a lot of like shots on like the glamour of, or, the quote unquote glamour of what a shopping mall of the seventies is supposed to look like and what mm. you're supposed to want. Right, right. And then in the beginning of that movie, if if you guys remember, the police raid a house and I think it's like a drug or gang house. And there's a little bit of like racial mm. uh elements to I, it. I haven't seen Dawn of the Dead the seventy one uh since Yeah, it's been a Clinton. long time yeah, it's for me. Clinton yeah, yeah. For me. It, it's it I personally think it holds up and um I saw the remake in the theater, and was that Zack Snyder, Snyder. Snyder when James Gunn had a little bit to do with it? Yeah. Bing Rames in that one? Bing Rames, yeah, yeah. And like most things, Zack Snyder, I thumbs down. But yeah. uh, but it was still cool to see his appreciation of of an old horror film, which yeah. I'm sure inspired him, and uh, you know, a different take on it. See, I was getting a little burnt out uh, on the, the tropes of the zombie movie, so I was always looking for some new, unique, twist on it because it was kind of the same thing over and over and over again and so when something like Shaun of the dead comes along and yeah. infuses humor into it and and I really love that and then there was a movie called warm bodies that came out a few years ago which i originally dismissed as sort of zombie twilight yeah, but right. then when i sat down and watched it it was basically romeo and juliet done with the zombies and it was brilliant it was really great i did see so that i, I remember liking it with uh, uh nicholas holt and was it was that amber heard with him or i'm not sure i don't remember but i remember uh, liking that uh yeah. just one more quick zombie shout out that did a twist on it it's been oh, over 20 years as 28 days later 
with the fast zombies. Yeah, and that was uh, that was long overdue. Like you know, the, yeah. the joke of the, are these the, zombies? There was a there was a virus. It's a virus, disease, but I mean, like that. yeah, yeah. No, no, zombies you have to be dead. <laughs> that's, I think that's well, a, it can't be just you have a virus that makes you a cannibal. That's, well, that's kind of where the yeah, the, the genre they're, went. They're, the humanity's gone though. Yeah. So I'd have to say because that happened with uh, World War Z. Yeah, that happened with uh, the TV show Walking Dead. Like they kind of well, Walking Dead. They're actually zombies. They're, they're never dead. established. Like, they're the, yeah, yeah, but they have oh. they have a, a something. Everyone has this thing inherent that when yeah they do die and then come back. Yeah, but, I mean how they how they die, but they're actually yeah, dead. Yeah. Dead. Like, yeah, they yeah. die. They're not like because you could in the uh, twenty days later you can shoot them in the chest and yeah they'll drop them. Yeah. So that was a that was a fun twist. To, instead of slow lumbering zombies, you had them coming at you full speed. And, yeah, that's an evolution so. that I'm, I'm I'm glad that happened because that's something where you go like you know, it's it's going to take half an hour for it to get here. I think we're good. Yeah, otherwise <laughs> otherwise you, you could you could fight off thirty zombies with a baseball bat yeah. in just a couple minutes. But there were actual stakes that uh, involved with uh, Killian Murphy and and the people that yeah, yeah, yeah. come yeah, along yeah. the way were. There are several times where the blood is dripping on them, and yeah. they they have really nothing much else to do. Yeah, um, and then of course there is Zombie Land, which yes. was a lot of fun. Again, that, another I comical enjoyed. twist. I really yeah. like that. I, I do enjoy when they put a little comedy. Well, uh, Bill Murray and Adam Driver did a movie recently with Tilda Swinton in there, and it was a it was a great movie. Just the ending. It's like, oh, the plane crashed at the end. Like, you took me on this wonderful ride. It's like, oh, no, just, just stick the landing. Wait, was, was that the one directed by Jarmusch? Jim Jarmusch? I, I think so. I, I'm not, I'm I, not I didn't get spoiled. to see it, but. it. That movie was it was funny. It was great. I love the characters. And it, for some reason, they ended in a way. I'm like, you didn't have to end it that way. It was such a weird yeah. ending. Speaking of Bill Murray, someone recently posted on some Facebook group that I follow, what, what's the greatest cameo in movie history? And <laughs> one that came up a lot was Bill Murray showing up in Zombieland exactly. as himself. <laughs> yes, yes. To me, that was one of the greatest cameos ever. That was so much fun. Yeah, that was... I, I killed Bill Murray. Did you guys see the second one? <laughs> no, I never I, did get around to seeing the second one. I thought one. it was good for a sequel. It doesn't compare yeah. to the first, yeah, but... Yeah, that's why I was... It, if you do have a free hour and a half or two hours, it is worth watching. Uh, if it's on streaming, I'll check it out. Uh, yeah, I might check. Rosario it. Dawson oh, is sure. in it. Uh, I think a couple other people get added into it, uh, but it's it's worth watching. Yeah, yeah. Now this time of the year, uh, you know, I I have top ten, top twenty list of horror movies. Uh, three that I'll recommend this time of the year. Uh, my all-time favorite horror movie is Fright Night, uh, oh. the 1985 yes. version. Not necessarily the remake. Not that I have anything against the remake. I just never saw it, and I didn't think it was necessary. But the original Fright Night uh, is a perfect blend of horror and humor and great performances. And Peter Vincent. Uh, oh, it was just, yeah, Rod, Roddy McDowell, you know, playing the, the horror movie host. And um, that's one of my favorite movies to watch this time of the year. It's it's like you know watching It's a Wonderful Life at Christmas time for yeah. me is watching Fright Night. And what uh, a premise! Halloween. What if your next door neighbor was a vampire? Yeah, and it and it just it, you know right off the bat, like almost immediately after the opening credits, they're like, yeah, this vampire's moving in now. You know the sto- it's, they just jump right yeah. into it, which is a lot of fun. Um, an older movie that I really enjoy is called The Changeling, and not oh. the Angelina Jolie version, but there is a, a ghost story that came out in 1980 starring. George C. Scott, and he's a guy who moves into this historical home that's maintained by the historical society, and there's supernatural things that happen in in the home, but it's not just this haunted house story. Basically, he has to solve this uh, murder mystery, uh, and the, the spirit is sort of giving him clues on how to solve the, the murder mystery. And it's it, when I first saw it, I don't know how many years ago I saw it for the first time, but I'm like, this is brilliant. This is amazing. So that's another one that I really enjoy. And then a more recent movie that I really enjoy, even though it's probably more than a decade old now, is, is Trick or Treat um, with little Sam who wears like a burlap sack over his head. And they established that there are rules of Halloween. And if you break these rules of Halloween, little Sam will 
come and get you. You'll pay oh, the price okay. if you smash someone's jack-o'-lantern or, you know, you do things incorrectly. Um, and it's sort of a anthology where it has different stories that sort of intertwine. Sure, sure. And it is one of the best Halloween movies I've seen in a long, long time. So those are some that I recommend if you're going to get some friends together and watch. Uh, yeah. Those are some fun ones. Yeah, I had my Mountain Rushmore. The ones that didn't make the cut but deservedly because, you know, it's only it's only put four up there. If I take a more modern turn, it let me in. It, that, oh, the the remake with uh, Chloe I, I, Moretz. I, I actually like. I think that was really well I done. The Swedish one was great. It. Yeah. And then uh, the the American version of The Ring, which is there are not too many Japanese remakes that are, that the original Ring. I was like that movie. I I did see that in the theater, and I I I remember liking it, but I haven't seen it since. That was what over twenty years ago. Oh, wow. I'm but, still proud of you. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you can't take that from me. There's one. Don't, don't, he don't, saw one. Don't take that from me. I'm I'm happy for you. That's that's good. I have to say, I've never seen the ring. Oh, so, uh, this is I'm a first. To, uh, there we Ooh. go. Uh, I got one on Joe. I thought, <laughs> October weirdness continues. If you get a chance, that that's a movie that was. The concept, the premise, you're like, oh, you watch the tape, and then you get yeah. the phone call. But it, they re- did a great job in how they set up the mood and the atmosphere. Uh, yeah, if I, if I would say modern day horror, those go up there, and along then you know get stuff like The Conjuring and that kind of stuff that yeah. comes up. I know one movie that was just a really pleasant surprise when it came out. Um, you know, following the Blair Witch Project, which I thought was really, really overrated. Oh, thank um, you. It, but it did start this trend of like found footage movies and. It did give birth to um, the, uh, God, I just had the title, uh, Paranormal Activity. Yeah. I really enjoyed those movies. I thought they were scary as heck, and they're found footage, you know, these things caught on video. And uh, so even though I didn't care for Blair Witch, I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that it started a trend that gave us the Paranormal Activity movies. And uh, really enjoyed the first one. The second one I thought was a little too polished and too Hollywood. Uh, but then the third one I felt like kind of got back to its roots. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoy those if you haven't seen them. They're, they'll give you a good scare, good chill. Mm-hmm. Now, um, we were talking uh, before the podcast that, um, you know, there's a difference between these supernatural films that feature ghosts and werewolves and vampires and then the slasher films like, uh, you know, Friday the 13th and Halloween and stuff like that. And even though I do enjoy some of those movies to a certain extent, I tend to stay away from the slasher flicks because it, it's too close to what you see on the news nowadays. But um, a lot of these uh, movies are based on true stories. And sometimes, you know, like as I was doing research for today's podcast, there were a couple of titles that came up as I was looking up uh, horror movies based on on real incidents. There were a couple of titles that came up that shocked the heck out of me. Like, really? That was based on a true incident? But yeah, there are several movies, horror movies, that have come out that you know draw loosely on real life uh, incidents. You know, Hollywood uh, never lets a fact stand in the way of of uh, <laughs> yeah. telling a, a, an entertaining story. So they sort of take, you know, the nuggets of a true story and then turn it into a film. One that we talked about recently uh, is the Amityville Horror, yeah. probably one of the best known horror movies based on actual events, even though those actual events can be scrutinized. But as we talked about recently, there is the, uh, the, the guy who killed his entire family in this uh, home in, in Amityville. And uh, just uh, how many years later, like just uh, 13 months later, uh, the Lutz family moved into that home and uh, supposedly had all kinds of, of supernatural experiences that forced them to, to flee the home. Um, and so, of course, that gave birth to the Amityville Horror. And uh, to my surprise, I guess there were 11 films to date that are based on yep. those tales, which kind of surprised wow. me. I don't remember yeah. all that. I'll tell you one thing. That real estate agent either deserves a raise or should be shot. <laughs> That's one of the two yeah. ways that happens. That's right. Um, but I do remember when the original Amityville Horror came out, uh, I really enjoyed it a lot. It was one of my favorite uh, horror movies and has genuine, uh, you know, thrills and, and chills in it. Um, but it's very low key. It's not like heavy special effects. You know, it's just a voice, you know, get out, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so it was very effective. Um, you know, you could debate whether the things that the movie is based on actually happened or were they just exploiting uh, the situation for some reason, but uh, 
Uh, what are your What are your guys' thoughts on the Amityville Horror? Well, like I said, we we did dive into this a little bit, and I remember we what fascinated me was the stuff that could not be explained, like the things about the gunshots. How did no one hear the gunshots? The house was under observation. It's it's those facts. I'm like, okay, listen, guy went crazy, murdered his family, and then you know maybe that information influenced the next the next wave. Uh, but it was always it's the little things that you couldn't explain. So that's what stood out to me. Yeah, in the, in the notes that I have here, Daniel Lutz, who was the eldest of the children that went through that experience, apparently uh, spoke about his experiences publicly. And uh, there was a documentary that came out called My Amityville Horror, released in 2012. Um, I haven't seen that. I'm curious to see what he has to say about his personal experiences. But, uh, yeah, Andrew, what do you think? Yeah, I don't, like, of course, I haven't seen the movie. Surprise, surprise. Um, I, I only have a cursory knowledge of what what we talked about a couple of weeks ago, a couple episodes ago. Um, but like Nick said, there, there are those, th- this is one of those stories that stand out where there are several things that can't be explained. Mm-hmm. And which leads the door open to, yeah. was it super, were there supernatural things? Which mm-hmm. I, I'm a, I'm a, guy that believes that everything can be explained by reason. Right. And, and that, I don't want to say I'm, I'm not an atheist, but I think everything can be explained. Mm-hmm. Like when they're, um, when they're logical gaps, that's, that's what my, my ears per- perk up. I'm like, hmm, logic it doesn't fit here. Why, what's going on? I, yeah. I, I think it was a case of, um, you said it was, the house was under observation. Uh, was it by the police? Or, yeah, yeah they're, they're, the their FBI was actually watching him. FBI, okay, so there was a lapse in whatever. Um, well, it's, I mean, like I said, it's not, some, surveillance or communication or whatever, and the facts are lining just, up on that. The the thing things just fell into place where this is what happened. Right now, I don't, I can't draw a a path towards that, but do I think it was a ghost? I I don't. Right. Yeah. Personally. Because that was that the the fact that somebody had to be lying there because you can't have someone with a who shot a rifle, and the neighbors don't hear a thing. Yeah, and I, he didn't just fire he, one shot with a. How do you know he didn't have a a homemade silencer where he he he, he duct taped a, a an empty two liter over a shotgun and shot? I mean that's yeah. that's a good silencer. You know, <laughs> after after we tackled this on a recent podcast, I did a little reading on it, and there's all kinds of theories that maybe the sister was involved. She may right. have even instigated the whole thing, and there's all these theories, but I don't know if we'll ever know the, the true story behind it. But um, another movie, now if, if we were to sit around and go, all right, I need each of you to come up with a list of horror movies based on uh, real events. If I were to throw out A Nightmare on Elm Street, you'd probably laugh at me and go, come on, let's stick to reality here. Believe it or not, in doing research for today's podcast, A Nightmare on Elm Street came up uh, on the list of movies inspired by actual events. Mm-hmm. And that surprised the hell out of me. I so, heard about this. It was because of some uh, uh, Asian folk. that came yeah, yeah. So uh, according to the article that I found, uh, of course, Nightmare on Elm Street is about this killer who was uh, killed by uh, parents of students. He was a custodian at a school and he was burned in a furnace or something like that. And then he gets revenge by killing their offspring in their sleep. Uh, In an interview with Vulture for the film's 30th anniversary, Wes Craven shared that the film's premise was inspired by newspaper articles from the Los Angeles Times about young male Southeast Asian refugees who died in their sleep. So many uh, that uh, many men would reportedly refuse the sleep because of the nightmares that they feared would lead to their death. A total of 26 men died in their sleep in 1981 in a, a year. How do you explain that? I don't know. Um, but I had no idea that that nugget, that bizarre nugget, would lead to Freddy Krueger and a successful franchise, Nightmare I franchise. I remember this because one of the incidents that they looked at was, oh, they had to be this commonality. They were all infected with something. They all yeah. lived around a certain thing. They all had pre-existing condition. And some did, but some didn't. Yeah. I mean, you could. You, the problem is there's no consistent factor. Like oh they were all around you know like a Chernobyl site oh no, no. yeah <laughs> yeah something like that you know so but I 
I, if I read correctly, weren't they mostly from, uh, like, during the time of, like, Pol Pot, like, the killing fields of Cambodia and Vietnam? Yeah, I mean, so yeah. they grew up seeing some atrocious things. Mm. Yeah, you now, could. Nick, from, from your medical studies, have you come across instances where, like, people die in their sleep because of a severe, like, mental thing that just, like, shuts their body down? I've never heard of that. There's always been that, that, that I don't know if it's an urban legend, that if you dream of dying in your sleep, you die in real life. But I've died a lot in dreams before, I know. honestly. I've gone off I the think cliff in a car. Like, yeah, I've, I've, I've had dreams where I get shot point blank in the chest. Good Lord. And I always <laughs> yeah. wake up from that. So I don't think that's necessarily true. But Well, look, I'll... I'll Medically speaking, that there's a reason why you have your your brainstem automatically keeps you be breathing at eight to twelve breaths per minute. That's why when you go to sleep, that's why that's your you know, that little whole breathing thing that goes mm-hmm. in there. It is possible if you get some kind of usually it's some kind of occlusion, like some you have to stop blood flow to the brain for that to, for even that part to shut down. Mm. I mean, that's the whole part about people being vegetables. There's no activity here, but they're still breathing because yeah. the, the brainstem's still alive. I wonder. It was probably too early at the time to do studies on it, but I wonder if if they all had in common, like they were exposed to like something like Agent Orange or right, some right. other sort of and I'm sure com- that, chemical I'm sure, warfare. Yeah. I'm sure they would have to be because if, if people just and, and look, there is there are symptoms where people just give up and they, when you're really depressed and you've had nothing more, you close your eyes. You die of a broken heart, they say. Yeah, kind those of, things because you, there's certain yeah. uh, you know um, hormones and stuff that get released that can depress your heart rate enough and enough and enough, and your heart rate gets depressed enough, and you ha- already have some kind of condition. You have poor blood flow. Right, a blood vessel disease, you know, so vascular disease. Then, yeah, then these contributing, like, oh, and you just yeah. it happens. I did have something weird happen recently, and you can argue which one caused which. But uh, sound asleep a week or so ago, uh, and had a dream about my niece who had a new dog. In real life, she just got a new dog, and in my dream, I approached the dog, and the dog bit me on the leg. Well, I woke up from my deep sleep with an incredible pain in the leg that the dog had <laughs> bit me on, and it was the worst cramp I'd ever had, and I tried to stretch it out, and all day long as I walked around, I was walking around in pain, and one could argue, did the cramp trigger the dream or did the dream trigger the cramp, but that was very weird to have a dream about getting bit by a dog and then the wake up in terrible pain. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, it could be one or the other. It could be you subconsciously like jerking your leg be- mm-hmm. because of what was going on up here, and that caused the strain. Or well, it's those things where people say that I I was I, I was in a rainstorm. I was dreaming. You know, I was in a waterfall. I was you know something while in water, and they wake up and they piss themselves. <laughs> yeah. And it happens. Right. Because I, I'm, glad that I, I'm glad that's never happened to me. <laughs> I, mean, it, I mean, it's happened. It's happened quite a bit. And like you say, in, in rotations in hospital, you hear you read about cases, and it just happens. You know. And it's uh, yeah, it's one of those things. But yeah, I mean, look, that's that's terrifying that you. <laughs> this is something. Some, this this yeah. turns into like Hollywood crimes, into Joe's confession <laughs> hour of like the weird right. stuff. I did as a as a teen in preteen. I, my mom told me that I I uh, would sleepwalk occasionally, and that's always been a very odd phenomenon. Sure. I remember. Uh, I see you in a new light, Joe. I see you in a new, I see you in a new light. <laughs> I don't know if I still do it because I live alone, but I remember my mom, like I got up one morning and we were having breakfast or something. My mom said, uh, did you have a dream about uh, a baby deer? And I was shocked. I'm like, how could you possibly know that? And she said, because you approached me in the middle of the night talking about a baby deer. And I'm like, oh no. So used to sleepwalk. So there's a, there's a story there. That's an inspiration for a future horror movie. (laughs) Yes, yes. (laughs) Here's a here's another unlikely title that showed up in my research where I'm like, come on, how can this be based on real life? 1963's The Birds. Hmm. Have you guys heard this? No. This is new to me. It's I, I did not hear this, but you know what? I believe it automatically because birds are vicious <laughs> creatures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are. I, it's not just some pigeon well, they're hate. Little, they're little dinosaurs. This is not just some pigeon hate. No, no. So apparently an author named Daphne du Maurier uh, wrote a short story uh, that may have been the inspiration for Alfred Hitchcock's 1963 film, The Birds. Um, But the film was reportedly based on real life events. The film centers on a California coastal town that was terrorized by a flock of birds. In 1961, birds in the Monterey Bay area reportedly acted 
disoriented and rammed into people's houses due to an unknown cause. Uh, in 2011, it was reported that researchers found a toxin making algae in the birds that caused amnesia, disorientation, and seizures. Um, you know, I, I've seen the birds. I'm not a huge fan of the birds because I thought the premise was so ludicrous. And of course the universe would say, uh, guess what? It's based on, uh, actual events, which surprises the heck out of me. So yeah, now I, I got to I never heard that. that film. It's better than the trees attacking you, M. Night Shyamalan, the <laughs> happening. I'm like, really? The trees, M. Night? Well, that happened in The Wizard of Oz, which is a document yeah. documentary as well. Um, I love- You stole our apples. <laughs> <laughs> I just no, like to want to go and true, something true, off of you. True uh, little kid Andrew story. I loved The Wizard of Oz growing up, and I'd watch it like every Saturday. The one part that would scare me was the talking trees yeah. because they were so realistic. And like yeah. they were mean and just like the rubber suits yeah. scared the crap out of me. Yeah, they were terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I try not to be too hard on birds. I, you know, crows sort of have a reputation, you know, people uh, in, include them in Halloween decorations and stuff like that. But I've been seeing these videos where crows are very, very intelligent. And one of the coolest things that I've learned recently about crows is if, you feed them on a regular basis. They reward you by bringing little trinkets and items to you. And people have put out different things for crows, like nuts and things like that. And they'll find change or a marble or a key <laughs> or some shiny object in the dish where they had put food. So uh, my murder of crows brings me the keys to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, I, I saw something where a guy trained uh, a bird to, uh, collect paper money and it would go out and come back with a uh, paper money in its bill. I'm like, that's genius. Sounds like something uh, Mr. Burns would do on the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> and fly my feathered friend. And if that's the case, I wonder why Jake and uh, Strawshank Redemption never did anything for him. It's like, go get the keys. Jake. Get the keys. <laughs> so yeah, I, you know, the birds bad mouth our feathered friends, but uh, yeah, that shocked the heck out of me that that was based on a true story. Uh -huh. Um, another one that surprised me that uh, I did not realize is loosely based on a true story is Poltergeist, uh, the 1982 film uh, by Steven Spielberg, who uh, tells the story of a family whose home was built on uh, ancient uh, Native American burial ground and plagued by violent spirits, incredible special sure. effects. Uh, the premise of the story is based on the Herman family, who claimed that their Long Island, New York home was haunted by a poltergeist due to objects mysteriously flying around the house. Uh, the family who eventually moved believed the events were due to the home being near a Native American burial site. So I had no idea that that was based on actual facts. And again, the, 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 I didn't either. The damn realtor. <laughs> Frank, <laughs> was it, you didn't tell me about the burial ground. That's what we did, sir. You bought it anyway. <laughs> now, I'm curious. I, I have a couple of stories, but I'm curious. Have you guys ever lived in a home that... You had uh, paranormal activity experiences that you couldn't explain. Uh, did you live in like any older homes that had a history of that sort of thing? No, neither one. Wow. So no. I I don't have an like interior home story, but I have a UFO story. Oh, interesting. Um. So when my sister and I we were younger, we lived in Pontiac. And it was during the summer, so we didn't have school. And it was the, the night of a meteor shower. And I'm trying to think what year this would have been and how old I was. Pretty young. Because I believed it to be. Under 10 years old? Uh, probably right at 10. Okay. And my sister was right there with me. And she says she remembers it too. So anyway, it's probably like, it's late at night for kids. It was like 11 o'clock at night. But our parents let us stay up so we could see like the meteors. Shower, and, right. and we did. I distinctly remember, well, from that age, seeing a, a group of what I could only describe as like flying toasters with wings. <laughs> so, Are you sure that wasn't the Microsoft screensaver? Because <laughs> right. there were so, those. <laughs> so here's the thing. And they were flying like over our, our house. And there were probably a group of probably a dozen or between 12 to 16 of them flying in a formation perfectly. Um, I don't remember any movement on them. Like they weren't birds and you never see birds fly at night. Right. Not Rarely, really. No, no, no. Bats maybe, but no. Yeah. No, so birds tend to not, right. not fly at night. So if you ask Alexa to this day, ask her about the flying toasters. 
<laughs> above our house during the meteor shower, she will say, oh, yeah, I remember that happening. Wow. So Interesting. I don't, I have no idea what it really was. It could have, it's most likely the, ima- the imagination of an over, over active, active really imagination of, of this brain. And telling my, like looking down at Alexa, who's three years younger than me, saying, hey, did you see that? And also, I think the specter of probably my the first time ever of me seeing a meteor shower in real oh, life, yeah. which is as a little kid, that's that's amazing. Yeah, it's thrilling. Yeah. So yeah. I don't, I can't explain what that was. It it probably was not UFOs. <laughs> Although every day we're fine. You know, more and more people are telling stories about yeah. that kind of stuff. I mean, if, but, you want, if you want to convince yourself. Otherwise, then that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's my my that's my only okay. personal, like, I don't want to say supernatural, but my only personal um, e- event I think I witnessed that, that I could yeah, not yeah. explain. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Never had any other type of creepy in the house or any type of, like, demonic or religious experiences. Just that one instance. But I will never forget it. Yeah, I was, yeah. the the image is, or for what seared I remember, your brain. the image is is seared in my brain. Of and I distinctly remember they're going from the way our house was situated from the northwest towards the southeast towards like downtown mm. Detroit. Yeah, yeah. And I just just it was a group of what I felt like were like small metallic toasters that had like <laughs> little wings on them that were probably about this big. That's all I can Fair say. Enough. Interesting. Well, I'll say this. Maybe it's a cultural thing, but I know uh, when it comes to Indians, if there's any kind of bad story or any kind of bad vibes, we avoid it. Like, oh yeah, if you're buying, like, you know, when you buy a house, if the house is <laughs> like, in, I know for like I'm South Indian, uh, Telugu from Andhra Pradesh, my parents. If the house isn't oriented right, you, you yeah, you could be like, oh, it matches everything, good location, <laughs> you know, good five minutes from downtown, it could be a real just dream. The house is pointed south, out. Yeah, it's kind of like that Eddie Murphy routine where he said, you know. In a horror movie, a white family will yeah. stay in and investigate. Black family comes in and says, oh, what a beautiful house. Get out. Oh, Sorry, we can't stay. But Another you know, great horror film. Well, it's, and and that's Hill. absolutely true. Like We have a friend of ours in Magil's workshop, uh, Jeff. Jeff and his wife, Moscow, wonderful people. They'll drive all through Michigan. And they were driving back one day, and they said, oh, look, a garage sale. They pulled off the highway. It's a farmer down at a farmhouse, and then there's the table. That they, apparently what Jeff said is they were standing there. They come out of the house. I, it's the daughters or the wives all in unison locking arms and mm. just walking towards them Ooh. and they're, and Jeff's reaction is hey how you doing <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us are like gotta go get yeah, in the yeah. car drive away now yeah, I um I spent a good part of my youth I grew up in Hamtramck uh, I was born in San Diego but we moved to Ham, uh, moved to Warren when I was maybe two years old and we ended up in Hamtramck, lived in a couple different houses. And then my mom met this guy, Roy, this country bumpkin who came up from Kentucky to work in the automobile industry. And he had this really cool house in Hamtramck that was unlike any other house. If you've ever been to Hamtramck, uh, it's all duplexes where family lives upstairs and below. Mm-hmm. Uh, our house that we moved into uh, probably around 78 or so, uh, what looked like a red and white farmhouse. They call it a craftsman style house. Okay. And I found out fairly recently that it's almost an exact duplicate of a house that Walt Disney lived in in California. I, I think it was something that was kind of prefab you can order and and sure. build uh but it's called a craftsman style house and we had a huge side yard and we were the envy of all the neighbors we had a, it was just a really cool old house creaky wood floors and everything and my entire family all have our stories of of supernatural encounters i don't know when the house was built um but one that immediately comes to mind was uh, i used to when I was a teenager, I would lay on the floor watching TV, and we had this beautiful uh, shepherd husky mix, and he was my best friend, you know. And everyone was out of the house for some reason. I was home alone, lights off, watching TV. And my dog would always come over and uh, lay down with me on the floor. So I'm laying on my side watching TV, and I feel my dog come up behind me and lay down and kind of lean up against me. And so I'm just on my side Commercial comes on, I reach behind me to pet my dog and there's nothing there. And I distinctly felt something pushing me from behind, pushing against my back that led me to believe that my dog had come and laid next to me. And that really creeped me out. 
Um, oh, hey. Yeah, yeah. Um, my sisters have stories of lights going off in, in like, we, we had a basement with creaky stairs that went down to the basement, and they would be halfway down the stairs, and the light would go off, and they would turn around and run back up. And, uh, yeah, so we all had our horror stories of living in that house. It's, it's fond memories, but, uh, yeah, there definitely was – something going on in that house but uh yeah yeah maybe, that maybe it wasn't casper <laughs> i know yeah i don't know and i never really dug into you know the history of who lived there i did find out that um we had there was a person who lived in the house next to us who went on to become a successful filmmaker and actress in hollywood um in in the house right next like maybe 30 years before we moved there um but yeah i i never really looked into who lived in the house before us whether there were any murder suicides deaths anything like that but uh we were all convinced that our house was haunted so <laughs> it's like that's like finding a murder mansion at the, at the, at the, at the end of like the financial crisis in 2008 like this mansion it's a worth two million you can have it for a hundred and fifty thousand i mean yeah there was a murder suicide because everyone lost all their money but it's great yeah, yeah. uh yeah it, the former owner was uh oj simpson but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. feel free yeah yeah right uh another title that comes to mind as being uh kind of surprising even though I, I seem to recall hearing about this when i was younger um but jaws the movie was based on peter benchley's mostly fictional sure. novel um but there are stories that the novel was based on uh actual incident and the only thing i could really find on it is that um there was a 10 year old boy who was killed on july 12 1916 while swimming in a creek that was more than 10 miles away from the nearest ocean uh so a shark had Bull swam shark. upstream in fresh water miles. 10 miles and killed yeah. a 10 year old boy which created obviously this sense of paranoia wasn't there also an incident in coney island around that time like in the early 1900s i think there was also something about like coney island had a bunch of shark attacks well i've heard since you know jaws there and there's video footage or film footage of, of sharks in freshwater streams i guess it's just something they do occasionally oh the bull sharks yeah, yeah they're they're yeah. the ones that can actually come up there and you know they're still vicious but they don't get as big as a great white but you get a bull shark the size of the great white. Yeah, you'll change your Imagine diapers. if one swam all the way up to St. Lawrence, bypassed the Niagara Falls, went up the Welland Canal, and then came up here. Look, you want to create a little Michigan legend. Detroit. <laughs> you want to create to a little Detroit Michigan River. legend and have a bull shark. You know, and that's that's always what you always wear, but somebody you know brings like Asian carp or some nonsense yeah, like that. Yeah. Someone brings like a couple of baby bull sharks yeah. and then puts them in the, in the fresh water here. I'm like, why would you do that? Why would... Man. As if we need anything <laughs> for and jokes. It, for the, you do it for the laughs, right? Yeah, and yeah. like somebody oh, gets killed, and eh, you make a movie about it. And like now, and these things, <laughs> and, you know, bull sharks usually, you know, probably max out in about, you know, fifteen, maybe fifteen feet. You know, don't at me, any, bio, you know, zoologists out there, but they don't get as big as great whites. Yeah, but watch, watch the ones that'll happen to come to our area. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. Look at that; it's twenty-five feet. You know, it's weird. You know, we we talked earlier that Jaws scared a lot of people from going into the water, and it never really affected me that way. Uh, till I got like a little bit older and I would go to California for a vacation or something and we'd go swimming in the ocean and come out and then we'd go up on the pier in a restaurant and you'd look over and you'd see a sea lion, you know, there, or, or I saw a video, one of my favorite places to visit in California was Redondo beach. I remember seeing a video of a baby whale that swam close to shore and was frolicking in the water. And you're like, I'm swimming in there. Like, the, the more you venture out into the ocean, the lower on the food chain you become. Thank, thank you. <laughs> and yes. I reached a point where I'm like, you know what? I'm good. Yeah. I don't need to venture out in the ocean anymore. I'm, I'm kind of done with that. I'll tell you, I, I've been in the Caribbean. When you see, feel cold water, people, oh, let's go, let's go swimming in the ocean. I'm like, yeah, it all sounds great on a, on a movie. When you feel cold water on your feet, you're too deep. On another yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. if I see sea lions, I'm like, it's who eats them. I'm not going to be in it. If I say, oh, look, a sea lion came. I'm like, nope. Staying on the, staying on the, staying on the shore. <laughs> you know, I read a, a, a fact that no human being uh, has ever been harmed or killed by an orca in the wild. There have been incidents, incidents in like, you know, sea, sea world, world and yeah. stuff where they, yeah, it's I don't know if they're, if they're playing or get aggressive or whatever. But they said in the wild, no human being has ever been harmed by, by an orca. But I do not want to test that. No, I don't no. want some scientists to go, huh, 
I guess we were wrong on that. Yeah, he's the first one. <laughs> Uh, or That's like, not what you want to be known for, though. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, they, they figured out, oh, you're melting the ice. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm good. I don't need to test that theory. Yeah, I don't so. want to find, I don't want to be the first person to find the giant squid. I don't want to be the first person to find the megalodon or the megalodon that's been yeah, extinct, yeah. the 65-foot <laughs> great white. I'm like, hey, look what I found, guys. Speaking of which, avoid Meg 2. Oh, my God. Yeah, it looked awful. What I, I, a disaster. I, I, I avoided Meg 1. Yeah, yeah, same here. <laughs> Meg 1 was just, like, can't be fun because I love Jason Statham. Meg that, 2, I turned off about 15 minutes into but it. But that's yeah. one of those things where they took the book, and I was like, you don't have to do exactly the book, but the book was actually entertaining. It, it, it had a Jaws vibe to it, the way it was written by Stephen Alton. Yeah. But then, you know, they... You know, they took it, they make it hot, they want to make it full action, go ahead, do it. And then the second one, you're right. Second one, I, I, I saw, the, saw the trailer. I didn't want to watch it. I saw it on, on streaming. I can't, get the, I can't get the time back. I, I can't <laughs> I get that time back. I know. It makes me angry. Uh, here's another uh, based on real experience a tale that, Andrew, you might uh, appreciate this one. A movie called Fire in the Sky. Are you familiar oh, with this one? Yeah, ab- about a alien, alien abduction. Yeah, so Travis Walton uh, claims to have been abducted by aliens in 1975. He was heading home to Snowflake, Arizona with a few colleagues. He went missing for five days before returning and ended up publishing his experience in a book uh, called The Walton Experience, which uh, was later made into a book called Fire in the Sky. Um you know, when it comes to these alien encounters and stuff, man, it's it's like it's, you, you're seeing with TikTok and all this stuff and everyone has a camera in their phone, you're seeing a lot more of so-called evidence out there. But the technology is so sophisticated, sophisticated today for special effects and editing that you have to question anything you see. So I don't know, you, you guys buying into the whole these aliens seem to be more and more frequent lately or I uh, you're just I, missing it. I love the topic and it'll be a great podcast, a great episode, future episode. I know one thing I, there was supposed to be a Senate hearing about this and there was, it was supposed meant to be public. Yeah. It w- became private. The senators came on and said, we have to classify everything. Anyone with a phone can make, make up stuff. Anyone with software yeah. these days, I tend to look at footage of what the United States military has. That's what, when you have, Something from an aircraft. Yeah, carrier, and you hear jets. that radio chatter. And, and these are people who are mentally cleared to fly. They can't be like, well, I'm suicidal. Yeah, you know, they, then they're going to get in the plane. They, they go through severe mental checks before they can be given a nice right. piece of right. hardware. And these people are with 2020 vision going, I see something I can't explain. Yeah. And you have the Russians and the Chinese going, it's not us. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, it's not you. If yeah. it's a private company, you're violating airspace. If it's a public, if it's some part of the American government, I'm like, is that where all the money's going? Because. It looks fast, and I'm still stuck on I-75. Yeah. So I want Area to see- 51, maybe? I yeah. don't know. I, do you remember recently um, there, were, there was the, the Chinese balloon that we shot down? But at the same time, there were two or three other incidents that happened within a couple of days of each other mm-hmm. because we closed our radar screen on and, and what we can pick up. Yeah. And we shot yeah. something down right here uh, over Lake Huron, mm-hmm. and they never recovered it. Mm-hmm. But I've heard- Stories, uh, it was either the late 60s or 70s, there's a decommissioned uh, Air Force base up by Escoda called Wordsmith, and there were planes, they were, I'm yeah. pretty sure there were, there were nuclear weapons stored there, hmm. and there were planes saying that we intercepted things that we could not explain. Wow. Well, see, the way I look at it is, you know, especially with the James Webb telescope that just came on, it showed all the new images. Is there, yes. if you ask me, it's like a range of questions. Are we alone in the universe? No, mm-hmm. mathematically. Is there life out there? Yes. Yes. Is there intelligent life out there? Yes. Is there intelligent life that can travel the the stars? Yes. Is there intelligent life that travels stars that we have encountered? Okay, now I have to hold up. Because, you know, then I at that point you didn't say, okay, we need a little bit more evidence. Because if you're asking me to just on probability, you have billions and trillions of galaxies out there and all that time. If I say, nope, just us in the universe, depressing as hell, but <laughs> mathematically not likely. It's It's for sure not like the Russians or Chinese, because since World War II, we've had the most advanced right. technology in, in regards to the air and space. Right. Yeah. So if anyone were screwing with the rest of the world, it would be us. But there would I don't see there would be any reason why there would be a secret government program to try to fool the American public into thinking there were aliens. But it yeah. also comes but, up to the question, why? Whatever it is, why? Yeah. Okay, we're not alone. They're here. They saw you, Mr. Snowflake, 
driving in Arizona, why you? <laughs> of all the people, why you? Yeah. Why not go to New York City? And there was that incident in uh, Project Blue Book where they said 19, I think it was in the 50s. It was right over the, the national lawn. Mm. People said, we saw something we can't explain, and we saw our fighters chasing it. And so yeah. It was right around the Cold War. So that was broad daylight. So it's not like that happened at 3 in the morning or something. So yeah. that's documented. It was on the Washington Post. People can't explain it. And then they said, okay, let's just kind of, if we don't talk about it, we'll just forget about it. Yeah. I had a, a experience similar to you that uh, didn't quite have an unexplained ending, but I remember, again, living in Hamtramck, uh, my brother came racing in through the door screaming, going, I just saw a bleepity bleep UFO. And I'm like, come on. So we go outside. I'm like, where did you see it? He said it, it went down below the, the homes in the distance over there. And so we're watching, and sure enough, this glowing orb like lifts off into the distance and i'm like you gotta be kidding me so we hop into my brother's car and we start chasing this thing and it's moving at a fairly low rate of speed and we're chasing it and chasing it and chasing it and we finally get close enough to realize that it was a large uh, electronic sign of some sort and it had a message going around the, the perimeter of it that had something to do with the Marines that were killed in Beirut at the time. I guess a base was attacked yeah, or something. In Lebanon, in yeah. Lebanon, 1983. Yeah. yeah. And so it was. It had to have been suspended from a helicopter, but the helicopter had no lights on, no identifying lights. So it, it, they must have deliberately perpetuated this hoax to draw attention to the message wow. that was on this That's device. But it sure strange. looked like a UFO, and I'm sure there were a lot of reports going into the police station I'm the uh, CEO the I'm like fellas the helicopter really <laughs> you had to freak people I couldn't have just gone to the local news and said we want to yeah. let people put know the, about put this on ABC yeah. <laughs> 290 Marines killed in a bombing in Beirut yeah. Sergeant we, can I talk to know. you was it your idea to do the whole sign thing blowing because we've got a bunch of UFO calls now thanks no, that that brief moment before we discovered the explanation it was imagine yeah. thinking you're you're chasing a UFO that, that's a UFO up there. That was that was pretty awesome. I, I, I do have an aunt in Georgia who claims that she's been abducted by aliens not once, but twice. Ooh. And sequel. She, and she's she's dead you talk to her and in her mind she's not lying. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Well no, but here's the thing. Yeah and and of course I'm not gonna say no that didn't happen to you because I I'm not that kind of person, but Yeah. I, I try to explain, I try to, in my mind, think, did she just have like a really weird visceral dream that this yeah. happened? Yeah. I don't know. And that's what polygraph is. There's a certain limit to polygraph because, you know, there's some people like so, someone experiences something and then someone wants to pile on. You can catch them with the polygraph. Yeah. But someone who genuinely believes that they yes. experienced yeah. something, yeah, they're not lying the machine yet. can't tell you're lying because they believe it. Yep. Yeah. You guys got me thinking about the Treehouse of Horror Simpsons episode where... Homer gets abducted and he immediately drops his pants and the aliens go, we've derived all the information we need from anal probing. So, uh, well, you know, there's quite a few more movies that we could have tackled based on real stories. A lot of them get into the slashing and serial killer realm, which I don't necessarily need to get into. This you know what? Let me, let's at least give a shout out to American Werewolf in London and 30 Days of Night. Yeah. 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 That's and one good. of my favorites from the last couple of years, Midsummer. <laughs> That's go. right. Creepy, That's creepy right. movie. Happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Happy Halloween. You too, guys. Don't eat too much candy. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>